Okay, very sorry about that delay, folks. Uh, there was a bit of a rules issue. However, it has been clarified. So we are now ready to start this match of CDU Bandits going against Eerie Raptor Daptors. Dapper Raptor. Eerie Dapper Raptors. That's it. Yep, so we are ready to kick this match off. Sorry about the delay. Like I said, rules and also my unit. Uh, we just finished our match against Black Omen, so uh, so starting things up was a bit slow, but once Eerie locks in, we will be able to get started and go straight into that mech action you all love and crave. as I frantically get all of my overlays and everything ready. And team one is locked, we're ready to go straight in. Oopsies, wrong screen, sorry about that. There we go. Aha. Oh no. Sorry, like I said, just getting everything back up and running, but now we are ready to hit the ground running. So, let's see what both sides are bringing. Dapper Raptors is bringing a Vulcan, a Flea, a Yenlo Wang, Assassin, Thunderbolt 9SE, Firestarter H. So a little, a few unconventional picks there, but this is definitely a close range brawl deck. And Critical Damage Unit is bringing a Vulcan, Javelin, that's the HMG variant, a Dragon Flame, a second Javelin, a Firestarter A, and a Crab 27B. So... A few unconventional picks, typically not what you see in the common meta drops, however, there's no doubt about it that both teams are definitely going to be running a full-on push brawl deck. A bit of MPLs, Thunderbolt 9 SE most likely has large pulls, but that is definitely what the teams are going to be running here. So let's see. Actually, I'm curious. What is on that Thunderbolt? Let's go check. Let's see. Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt. Where are you? Is he going Gamma? Nope, that's the Flea. Thunderbolt's probably all the way in the back here. Triple Large Pulse. Yep. Explorer coming up in center first with the fire starter. A little bit unchallenged. Eerie doesn't really seem to want to fight this yet. Eerie seems to be grouping up to form a murder ball. Getting a little bit prepared. They're, they seem to be foregoing caps and are probably just grouping up for the big push. Seeing as even their slowest mech, the dragon, does have a speed push. Oh, I stand corrected. Black Tack and the Javelin's going to run in. He's going to challenge the fire starter and the assassin. But even though Black Tack is outnumbered two to one, the Firestarter and Assassin do bail without even doing as much as shooting back. This is the Light Peep SRM Assassin. A bit of an unconventional pick, not what we typically see, but I'm curious to see how it plays out. Eerie's coming up over the top. Are they going to push? Are they going to poke? Nope. They're just running straight in. Black Tack leaps over the, em the enemy team. They're all just leaving the mechs in the low ground of the dust, and Black Tack pulls back. Eerie does seem prepared to push here, and I'm not sure if CDU... Or I'm not sure if CDU... No, C CDU is going to push here, but I'm not sure if Eerie's ready to receive. I 
over one thing I do want to note here to everybody that's currently watching is how far in the back the dragon flame is he's not getting a lot of shots he's not really able to deal a lot of the damage that he needs to deal seeing as he's the biggest and tankiest mech on the team he is coming up though he is gearing up to take a few more shots but nope he's still hiding in cover and no team has really taken the damage lead yet I stand corrected Monolithian in the Javelin is legged and his open leg and his last leg is open and Raptor Eerie smells blood they are coming in to take that last leg Mono doesn't even know that there's a mech behind him yet he's just moving away trying to get to safety as he can however it will not be enough as the flea can obviously outrun a leg Javelin and see being up pretty hardcore they're on the back pedal now it seems Eerie's coming over the top. Eerie's lost a little bit of their coordination as far as the push goes, but it doesn't matter because CDU has also lost that that, that, that coordination. Um, however, if I were uh, CDU right here, I'd ignore the mechs in the low ground. I'd immediately go save my mechs up top. However, they have seemed to decide against that. Sava ship is legged not long for this world. He forgets his override and he does shut down. Black Tack gets throw down. That's the first death on Eerie. And now there are two fresh CDU lights, or not fresh, but relatively fresh CDU lights coming in. Embarrassing in the assassin is legged. And he goes down. This is now a 4v4. Alright, so CDU might be able to make a comeback here. Black Tack is legged, but he's gonna be able to shield that leg effectively. As he's now going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Yen Lo Wang. Oh! This is now a, th a 2v2 of the Dragon of the Flame and Firestarter against the Flea and Vulcan. The Flame and Firestarter have the huge weight advantage with the Firestarter's leg. That's a huge loss right there. In fact, I'm not sure if they're going to be able to win this now with the legs fire Firestarter. The Flame just needs to focus on the Flea and take him straight down. CDU, you're the underdog. You got this. You're not out of it just yet. Oh, the flea is light. The flame does take down the flea, but he is one touch CT. I guess. A Vulcan who's one touch both legs. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. The Vulcan is going to run for dear life. He's going to go off the cap advantage due to the fact that Eerie does have two caps. And he's going to play his life, which is not the worst pick. In fact, that's probably what I have, would have done in the same scenario. But let's see if he can pull off a cap advantage. Is this Dragon's stand, standard engine? Inquiring minds want to know. Dragon. Delphox is LFE with the 4 medium pulse LB10. That's a lot of ammo for a comp drop. But, like I said, there are some or there are some unorthodox picks here. Not stuff you're used to seeing. And you know what? Ammo count might just fit into that as well. So, if they win, then who am I to judge what they are bringing? Run, little Vulcan, run. All right, slicing the Vulcan, move, move, moving to Kappa, trying really hard to get that cap win. Uh, CDU is just holding Theta, though. Uh, they're leaving the Dragon to hold Theta, which is the smart pick. and Or I believe they're leaving the Fire Sir to hold Theta, and they're leaving the Dragon to go cap Gamma. Now, if we do some quick math here, there's seven minutes left, uh, and that's one tick per second. So that should be about 420 seconds for seven minutes times that by two. Uh, but actually, no, cap difference is critical here. Raptor Ziri needs 350 points left to win. 350 times two. 
Raptor's Eerie wins off of a single cap. Raptor Eerie do doesn't have to do anything. They win off of a single cap. CDU has to take Gamma, get to the other side of the map, haul ass in their LFE Dragon, which is, of course, has already lost its side and taken a huge speed hit. They need to get back to Kappa. They need to fight the Vulcan. They need to kill it. And they need to get Kappa before caps become critical because because Eerie can win off of a single cap here. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm not sure Eerie knows they went off of a single cap because the Vulcan's starting to skirmish into Theta. He can't push. He's He has one touch both legs, and the moment he goes for Theta, it's over. Fizu's here, waiting in cover. He's just waiting in the pocket. He knows that the Vulcan is coming, and he knows he, that the Vulcan's near because the Vulcan stepped on the cap. Fizu's about to go in. Oh, Fizu gets the leg. Fizu... Slice goes down in Eerie. Eerie, you shouldn't have done that. Eerie, I think Eerie just... Yeah, the math was sound. Eerie did not need to push that. Eerie could have held on to Kappa. Their Vulcan could have camped there, scratched the cap to stop it indefinitely, and Eerie could have won off of the single cap. And now we watch CDU slowly slog their way on their legged fire starter and LFE dragon all the way to Kappa. I'm sure that now Eerie, because the match did not immediately end, I'm sure that Eerie are now realizing that Holding on to Kappa would have won them the match, and they're kicking themselves for going in that push. But hey, you know, sometimes when you're in the match, you don't have the clear headspace to do the quick math in the head in order to know whether or not you need to fight for those caps. So, you, you know, we've, we've all had it happen to us, just sometimes we go a little red in the head and we can't really figure out what math is. So, it's all good. There are four more drops, and this one... Still has like three minutes to end, so don't worry. As we watch the legged fire starter cross the map, this is watching paint dry on a wall. No worry, folks. We'll get to Kappa eventually. Hopefully. If not, well. Actually, while well, I'm waiting for him to get that cap, y'all, my food just came, so I'm like, I'm eating pizza, I'm a little swell. Hey, why don't you give me some, huh? Ah! The scout Derek has arrived. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome my co-caster, scout Derek. I would share the pizza, but I believe you're on the opposite side of the country. You missed a hell of a first match, let me say. Well, I am catching up now on the stream. Wonderful. Oh no. The match isn't over yet. CDU won't be able to get it until they get another cap. We gotta wait, bros. Actually, while I'm doing that, I might as well get my overlays ready since I had to jump out. I had to immediately jump here after doing the match against Black Omen. Yeah, I was uh, unfortunately caught up in traffic. Nope, know. you're fine. You're fine. But it seems, judging from the loadout, both teams wanted to engage in a more aggressive stance than a defensive one. Yes, definitely. Uh, Eerie bringing Yellow Wing and Assassin, definitely all very aggressive chassis. Mm -hmm. I was a bit weary about the Yellow Wang simply because if there's fast lights running around you, sometimes a single AC-20 miss can be crucial. Absolutely. However, uh, seems CDU won the day. The Dragon Flame managed to tank for the carry. And I believe I'm going to 
but just chalk this down in my notes as a CDU win, even though the match isn't formally over yet. I actually didn't get a chance to check. Oh wait, no, I did check. Uh, Assassin 27 was snubs in SRM 4s, so that's right. Of which, I actually don't know if that variant's good for it. Uh, I haven't checked out some of the new Assassin variants post-patch. All right, 20 more seconds, and then the caps will have completed. GG's. Uh, CDU pulling out of drop one with a cap victory. Let me get these match stats published. And if we look at, actually, I'll, I'll pull up the damage screen after this, so everyone can see it. While I get the next match ready. And let me get my my co, my wonderful co-caster, Scout Derek, into the lobby. So he can give you all the insight away. that I will not be able to give. So next drop, we are on Canyon Network. Let me pull up the damage scores here. So if you pull up, top damage on the CDU side was Black Tack and the Javelin getting 300. Nope. Top damage was Fizu getting 418 in the Firestarter. Uh, second was Black Tack getting 355 in the Javelin. Monolithian getting 30 damage in the Javelin 11F. That's definitely not what you want to see, seeing as the Javelin 11F with the, with the heavy MGs is one of your primary damage dealing lights. So getting picked early and getting only 30 damage is definitely not an effective start to the night. The damage over Eerie was much more well spread, with 432 being in the top, sliced with the Vulcan 5T, and the lowest going to Embarrassing, getting 185 in the Assassin 27S. CDU did announce that they are doing a major uh, player swap, so hopefully that's done quickly, and then we can get rolling on drop 2. You know, Derek, one thing I really like about uh, these lower div uh, matches is, uh, uh, is you know, you see a lot more variety in strats. Like, if you watch a div A match, a lot of the maps break down the same way. But when you're at div B, C, D, E, F, like, you really see a lot more variety. You really see a lot of out-of-the-box stuff that you usually don't think of. For, for, be for better of the worse, of course. That has to do mainly with pilot skill. Uh, most pilots are uh, varied in the things they can do, mm -hmm. and in the styles they play as. Uh, top tier teams basically have a format. They most no, most teams follow that format, so you don't see a lot of variety. In some cases, you do uh, with the world championship matches. Once in a while, you'll see this really, really bold strat. And it tends to work, but in lower divisions, most of the time, it it comes down to an attrition fight, mostly because people are again are not as skilled. That's not to say it's a bad thing, but it's actually a good thing, especially when we're down here casting teams. It makes it a much more interesting fight, realistically. All right, yeah, that uh, definitely makes sense.
especially with teams like CDU and Erie. They will definitely be bringing probably quite varied mechs, too. Especially with the yeah. mechs, you know? Like you were talking about the Yenlo Wang on Polar Highlands. Normally, that would not work in a higher division game, but seeing as we're down here, probably can work. Probably better for those players to run a, a mech like that because it's yep. quirked uh, the Wazoo, as they say. <laughs> Uh, so which are for the second map? Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be Canyon, correct? Yep, yep, yep. It's going to be mining. Okay. And the three caps, I believe, are Kappa, Theta, Epsi. The three down the middle. So I believe we're just going to see uh, a similar situation to Polar, with similar mechs. Yeah. yeah, I mean, definitely, historically speaking, CDU on Kem on uh, on on Canyon, as they had a lot of spectators during Comp Q. Uh, his, historically speaking, every canyon deck was a balls to the wall push. Uh, they typically like to stack like a few big LB10 assaults, like say Slept Near Annihilator, and then a lot of lighter mechs around it. So I'm definitely expecting to see that here. Eerie, I'm not sure because I haven't seen Eerie play a lot. Um, and um, I believe this is Eerie's actually comp debut. Do not really? do not quote me on that, but I believe this is their comp debut. So. Um, I know they've been a faction play unit for a while, but I believe this is their debut, so I'm I'm not sure what to see from them, and I am very curious. Oh shit, we're on mining. Fuck, drop three is canyon. Map three is canyon. Oh, it's a good thing you read the uh, chat. spreadsheet error. Spreadsheet error. <laughs> That's for Airy. I say welcome to competitive. Mm-hmm. Uh, thank you for coming and trying it out. The more so teams, the merrier. To see people, indeed. All right, Erie's locked. Let's go in. I still think hmm? when we started out back then, we were like, like towards the lower end as well, and slowly we gradually came up and. I was trying to just play yeah. Div A, Div B. <laughs> I started on a Div D team. And I, and I didn't get into Div A until you and I were on MJ-12. Alrighty, CDU is bringing a Phoenix Hawk 2, a Cyclops 10Q, a Mauler R, a 1R, Firestarter A, Grasshopper 5H, uh, Urban Mech R60L. What do you see on the Eerie side? Eerie, they got a Mad 2. An Alpha, Vulcan, Firestarter, Warhammer 9D, a Katana Cat, and the Grasshopper 5H. Mauler is rocking the 2 UAC 5, 2 UAC 10. Uh, slept near 10Q, obviously SRMs. Uh, yeah, CDU's going to full Brawl deck, and it seems Eerie's running a bit more of a traditional mining trading deck. I wonder what's on that Alpha. Alpha's got the Ndaka going. We could talk ah, about the so light PPC. Let's see what's on the Grasshopper. The Grasshopper looks like it's running Laser Bomb, and your Vulcan is your standard run of the mill. Firestarter yeah. as well. So it looks like uh, Eerie basically. Took Theta immediately. However, CDU is gathering up here uniformly, and it looks like they're just going to push straight through. Yeah, I don't I know if that's going to be a good idea. I think <laughs> Erie is going to just set up here and shoot them as they come up, and now we see the 10Q take a little bit of damage here. Yeah, this match will be decided on how well the Erie range deck can take a push. Uh, however, as you know about the Marauder Alpha, the biggest bonus that mech has now is sustained DPS with the UAC jam chance. So if the if, if the Marauder Alpha does get set up and they push into its line, Blood Eagle may be racking up some serious damage this match. Definitely. 
Uh, it looks like CDU is uh, playing that low ground. Yeah, I think they're getting a, l a little too hesitant. They're not quite sure where they where they want to jump in yet. Now CDU finally realizing that they do need some caps. Firestar going back to Cap Gamma and Epsi. Yeah. Uh, Eerie still has a chance to go grab Kappa and get a triple cap going. Eerie cannot but... grab Kappa because it's ISC. Remember, only three cap. Kappa and Epsi are legal. That's true. Uh, I'm surprised, though, that Eerie's bunching up as much as they are, given the fact that they're on the range deck. I would immediately pull it to the back wall if I knew that they had Brawl and I had cap advantage. I would have gone for the hills. Ryder and the Grasshopper for Eerie is actually taking pretty big damage. CDU's, CDU's taking a little bit too down much damage already. Grasshopper's at 83%, and another strike's coming in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Grasshopper's taking way too much damage. At this point, honestly, CPU needs to ball up and put, pick a corner to push. Yep, Striker and the Grasshopper's open side, and with a build like that, the speed he's running, I'm willing to bet that he's XL. I think he is XL. Considering his build, it looks yeah. like they're trying to pick the right side now, looking for an advantage to move up. Right, if CDU, sorry, yeah. that advantage. If CDU does spot it, well. though, pushing around the right side low is almost un uncontested, as I'm sure Fizu and the Firestarter has now realized. The Vulcan and the Katana Cat not scouting. Maybe the Katana Cat's about to see this Firestarter. Firestarter is actually moving back now. And I feel like this is going to be a pretty decisive. For Eerie. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. CDU's biggest error was just not getting the push rolling as soon as they should have. Like, even if they even if they chose the uh, the the not most optimal route, like even if they didn't choose the most optimal route, a push route is better than no it is better than no push route. Especially oh. with when they when uh CDU has a Mauler. Yeah. However, the Mauler is UAC 10 and 5, so. Yes. But they also have a 10Q. It looks like a push snubs. Deck. It's got streaks, yeah. snubs, and rockets. And it looks like they finally decided to push up on the right side. And Eerie, I don't, uh, I don't think they've realized yet. Better, better never know they do not. However, the Firestar it's... and Vulcan are not scouting. They as soon as they come around, though, Blood Eagle's going to be able to get the farm on here shortly. Like they've already seen it. The Grasshopper goes down. Firestarter's moving up as best as he can. Trying to get some hits on that Grasshopper, but he cannot. Robbie's just waiting Walking. around the corner. Robbie needs to wait for as soon as the lights to push. Robbie needs to wait for the for the Vulcan and Firestarter to get in range and bring his streaks to bear. But instead, he's training like... against the Marauder with streaks. That Alpha's just getting punished though. He's at 45% now. Probably definitely core now. He's open both sides and red CT. Urban Mech's still fresh. Urban Mech and the Firestar need to work together. Absolutely need to work together in order to get something done. Because it looks like the Mauler and the Cyclops are a little bit hung up. That line, that firing. The Katana Cat's just sitting there up top and getting free damage in. Not even contested at all. Oh, Robbie goes down to 10Q. Down. It's, down to, uh, it's down to the Irby and the Mauler. However, Vulcan's coming behind the Irby. Mauler's just... Mauler just decided run hot or die and ran straight in. It's now down to J-Rock. Oh, I forgot CDU had, had a Phoenix Hawk in the back. What have yeah, you been doing this match? though, that Phoenix Hawk did get beat up initially early on. So ah, 2 ER large, large, that's why he's open. He was the only one tra trading at the start. Absolutely. He was on uh, the upper ground there. While his, ah. the rest of his teammates were standing down there, unable to do anything. Unable to make a decision. And the fire star is about to go down. Getting legged and... Focused on by the Firestarter, the Vulcan, and the Katana Cat. Yeah, and now it's just down to. Oh, never mind. Very good job from Yuri, setting up those lines of sights. Could have had your pseudo lights and light mech scouting a little bit more, but that's fine. Mm -hmm. Still did an amazing job in holding that.
get this damage board up. Alrighty, so now let me get damage board up so players can see that while I swap sides. Top damage on the uh, CDU side going to, let's see, top damage going to Striker in the Grasshopper, which, you know, he was the heavy peep tra trader, so it does make sense. He brought the biggest ranged guns, and a lot of CDU didn't really get to bring any of their raw guns to bear, so uh, that one definitely hurt them a bit. And then... Bottom damage on the CDU side going to uh, J-Friend in the Phoenix Hawk 2, getting 128 damage. And, you know, his Phoenix Hawk only had two large, so he can only plink away the entire map so long before, uh, before things just don't work out. Top damage on the Eerie side going to Ryder in the Laser Vomit Grasshopper, pulling out 723 damage. With bottom damage going to Zori in the fire starter, getting 176. So pretty even damage spread from both sides actually, save for Ryder and Blood Eagle and the Grasshopper and uh, Marauder Alpha. I just want to say, however, I believe that outcome may have been vastly different had CDU been very more aggressive. At that initial fight, CDU was unable to make a decision to either move up or you know, rotate to a better position. Unfortunately, they stayed in that low ground on that ramp, which is not the best place to be. Especially with the Mexner running, like, you have a Daka Muller, you have a Cyclops 10Q, you have Light Mex to help support that push-up. I think it was the right decision to push up the right side since Eerie, Light, Max, and Pseudo Max were Pseudo Lights were not scouting whatsoever. But mm -hmm. again, they took way too much damage in an early game and that cost them greatly. And allowing Eerie a pretty solid win, I would say. Yep. Uh, I. If I was Eerie, I wouldn't change anything from that from that last deck. I'd say it worked spectacularly for them, uh, given the results. And if I was CDU, uh, I would either I would be asking myself, do I do I want to run this push deck again? Do I will I be able to push into the enemy this time, or will I get trapped? And you know, if the answer is you're going to get trapped, or you're or you're not confident to push, you may have to ask yourself the hard choice of do I of do I have to change my strat on the fly. I think in general the CDO just needs to be more confident in the in their strat. Confidence is everything. If you think you can pull it off, there's a chance you will pull it off. That's been in my experience. That's fair. Being willing and not willing makes a difference. It means the difference between a match going, say, Right now, this match eight and two, and a match being eight and six. I believe CDU could have came in there and cleaned up quite well. That alpha took quite a bit of damage. And the uh, very end there, towards the very end, he was down to forty-five percent, I believe, and mm -hmm. he was hurt all over in the CT. Had they moved up and they're more fresh, they have more fresh traders, more fresh mechs in general. Yes, that alpha would have died a lot quicker for sure. Alrighty, both sides are locked. We're going in. The score is one to one, and we're going into drop three.
Oh no, I pressed the wrong overlay key. What's the key to show the teams again? Tab. Tab? There we go, thank you so much. Okay, so, on the CDU side, we see, uh... Deputy in the Orion 1K, Quickdraw 5K, Grasshopper 5H, Slepnir Assassin 101, Commander 1, Commando 1D. So, two trade, no, one trade mech, and then three push mechs. So, CDU plans on doing the same thing. What do we got on the Eerie side? Eerie is a pretty similar deck last time, save for mech and two difference. And this time they have a Commando and a Blackjack, as well as a Victor. But they still kept the Marauder Alpha. And uh, I commemorate that because that thing is a massive boy and he does a lot of damage. Yes. So it looks like CDU taking that first cap in the middle, Theta with the Commando, rushing back immediately. Gamma being taken just now by the other Commando on Eerie's side. It looks like they're setting up on the top side. Once again, and this Victor looks like it's triple AC ten. Let's have a look at it. Yes, it is. It's triple AC ten Victor. Are there any light peeps to go with it, or just the tens? No, it's just triple AC ten. That's still pretty Black good. Jack, the blackjack, however, is a PPC mech. Too heavy PPC. Rider again in the grasshopper. And is that a light PPC assassin that I see there? Yes, it is. It's SRMs and light PPCs. Yep, that's the 27. Uh, they they ran that in drop one as well. Yeah, newly quirked and uh, ready to go. Nice to see that. The other side, CDU, that Cyclops. I assume it's an LB10 Cyclops. Uh, I actually didn't check. I just immediately it's, assumed it's it was a, It's actually a Donka Cyclops with a single ER medium laser on it, it. it. The small, actually. The single head small laser. I guess standard. One-on-one assassin. That's a standard assassin. It's medium yep. pulse and SRMs. Yep, and that did get a pretty big buff as well, but it actually didn't get a medium pulse buff. It got a standard medium laser buff, so... It looks like CDU brought a push deck again. However, Eerie's been setting up very high. Yep. They have two to three people up high. And Everyone's just on Citadel the corner. For them. CDU ne needs to make the choice to figure out if they need to push again or not. I see they have an Orion K. That is definitely a brawl mech. And there's a UAV on CDU's side, if you notice that in the pack. Not mm -hmm. sure if that was accidental or on purpose to counter a push. Or CDU's quick draw. Ah, it's in the back. But have the air large. So, in reality, the only CDU mechs that cannot effectively fight at this range is the Orion and the Assassin. Everybody else can trade. And typically that sounds like a good thing. But if you ask me, that's a trap for CDU. Because all those mechs are going to feel fine because they're doing damage at that range. When in reality, they're going to have to close. So even though they feel fine, their teammates won't. So they're going to have to communicate to each other that like, hey, we're not at full force. Honestly, I would push up. I would take the center, begin to work yeah. my way around them. They have three mechs on the top. Uh, two of them are PPC mechs. Yeah. And Embarrassing is coming up to bomb. bring to, to bring his Victor 9, 9A1 to, to Theta. Commando ran up there, but he didn't have any support. His two mates are not keeping the high ground they're being pushed down by Eerie, by that range trade. Again, CDU just needs to be aggressive here. They need to pick a side and push it. I think I think Deputy just needs to take that Orion's armor and just run over the top, spearhead his team through. Everybody else just Black needs track to the commando. Charge. He is running behind Eerie. Eerie oh. has no clue at all. Is he going for the cap? He's going for a kill. He's, He's shooting. going for the cap. He is attacking Blood Eagle. He's attacking him. CDU? I'm not are sure they... on this move. This CDU's is going. Going. No. Uh, CDU's going over and top. That commando goes down. The commando's gone. The commando's and, gone. And CDU's running over top now. Uh, yes, Deputy, you can't stop. You can't stop. You gotta keep going, my dude. You got a balls to the wall, push it! You have the Orion, has the armor. Push in, kill that Victor. Yep. Destroy it with the Cyclops. The two need to work together. Yep. That Victor is by himself right now. 
If they push in right now, that's oh, it. Oh, Surin dropped in the assassin to help, but yeah, they're they're just trying to trade. They got they gotta just push it. They gotta just rush in. That Orion needs to be very, very aggressive. It needs to yeah. be the meat shield to the Cyclops. Orion's AC20 and MRMs, and, now, and he's now fresh. Now he's getting he's... the idea. He's... he's... Nope, nope, well, nope. Stepping back. Well. <laughs> oh. well, that Cyclops has taken quite a bit of damage. These guys are Perhaps just too much. Are, are just teasing us. They're stepping forward, then stepping back. And the assassin goes down for CDU. Now that Orion's getting focused a little bit too much. Yeah, his strike arm goes down. His 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 torso armor is falling apart. Yep, deputy. And then goes he down. got headshot. Headshot. The Orion got headshot. Wow. I think that's a decisive one there too. Yeah, the Cyclops is about now down to Ravi. Focus yeah. down and disappeared. Fizu is just in the back of the map there doing what he can, but the over but the but the Overwatch quick drop is not enough to change this. Fortunately, so. And now that Alpha is just gonna sit there and wait for the quick draw. Quick yep. draw is running away. Just spitting out DPS as the CERN and the Assassin and Throw and the Blackjack come in to finish it off. Actually, how's CERN looking as Assassin? Yeah, CERN's fine. He should he should probably win that fight. Oh, he's Very surprising to me though that Orion getting headshot, however, he was moving pretty slow backing up. Yeah. Well, you know, these things sometimes happen in drops. Uh-oh. Stern getting stuck there. Getting shot in the back. However, the commando is there to help him out. Freezy doing his best. But it's not enough. GG's. It was an XL quick quick draw, too. Now we go to Canyon. Eerie. Doing a great job again, setting yeah. up, getting those lines of sights. However, oh like last drop, uh, lack of information allowed that commando to get into the uh, back. Are you are you still in the match? Yes, I am. Can you send me the match ID, please? I forgot to grab that. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. I make it so. Then my man. Uh, let's stop sides yet. We go to Canyon Network. Thank you very kindly. Yeah, one time I forgot to do that. I saw the double D's and my brain stopped for a moment. <laughs> uh, as we go through, so you can see the double D's as well. Because we know Twitch chat eats that up. Monolithian, the Assassin 101, getting three damage. And Deputy and the Orion K getting eight damage. And that's actually surprising to me because the Orion had MRMs. Which means that the entire time they were trading there at the top, I thought he was shelling out serious damage. Like, I thought he wasn't pushing like, he, like you know, the team would have needed him to. But I thought he was still doing some pretty serious damage. The issue there, from what I saw, is that he was using it as a sand blaster, like a, like a, uh, like a water gun. He, he was shooting it from a very far range, so... Mm -hmm. And had he been more aggressive with the Cyclops, they would have easily crunched that victor. Yep. The man would have had a lot more damage done. I think had CDU push with the Orion, because even even without the Cyclops, 1v1, the Orion should beat the victor. Just, if you go by the math of their DPS and their overall health, that Orion should win. Orion wins, and then you have the mechs trapped on top of Citadel, and they can't do anything about the mechs below them. And I right. think if they pushed and immediately killed the victor while it while it was isolated, CDU had a serious chance of winning that headshot or no. So I think that's the one place of where CDU went wrong is that when the the moment Black Tack pushed in his uh, commando and managed to turn Blood Eagle for about twenty seconds before the commando was killed. CDU did push over the top, but then they stopped once they hit the cap point. I think had they continued yes. going, they would have had a better chance. In a situation like that, if the light mech dies, you just continue on without them. Yeah. Fortunately. <laughs> you honor their memory by keep going forward until your enemies are destroyed. That is how you must bust that's how it must be done.
That's how you make it so. Mm -hmm. One member swapping builds. That's fine. You have five minutes in between drops. Well, let's see. Canyon. I mean, I did predict CDU would brawl. Um, but after seeing how that how their brawling strats went on mining, I really think they gotta swap things up. All right, looking over the chat, I learned this is not Eerie's first league. Their first league was Blood League. So while they are still relatively new compared compared to a lot of these other teams, this is their first ISC, but not their first comp league. So I do stand corrected on that. Thank you, Winscape, for giving me that information. I believe I was in the hospital at the time, so that information was yes, uh, not very well known to me fortunately so however thankfully you did you did recover and you were able to join us for more mech warrior action because i know that's what kept you going <laughs> knowing 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 that there were noobs to farm in mech warrior <laughs> i am however jokes aside i was very glad to hear about your return appreciate that <laughs> oh twitch chat don't ever change is cdu no another gnx sister unit <laughs> i don't know Couldn't listen strange stranger alliances have been formed oh yes all right swayden for CDU to lock A, hey, we go into drop three. Drop four, Canyon, yeah. Alrighty, on the CDU side, we see an Annihilator 1A, a Banshee 3MC, Stalker 4N, Marauder 9M, Locust Pirates Bane, Phoenix Hawk 2. It seems CDU got the met. Nope, never mind. Annihilator has AC 10s, Marauder has MRM, Banshee has poles. Yeah, it's Brawl. Well,. Eerie, on the other hand, has a hybrid mixture of DocMX, PVCs, and then the Battlemaster with assumingly ER Larges. Let's have a look at that. Yep, 6 ER Large. The awesome 9M running PPCs, the Catapult running PPCs. Actually, no, the Catapult is also DACA. So they have a mainly focused DACA deck. Jagermech running... AC5s and uh, UAC5s and UAC2s. UAC5s and UAC2s are doing the same combo as the Alpha. Of which, you know, synergy going. I'm so happy to see Jagermechs in comp again. They, they are fairly decent. They uh, spit out the damage like a true glass cannon. Mm-hmm. Uh, but let's see. The only mech on CDU that seems to have any trading ability... Is the Stalker 4N with six lar larges. However, this is still just outside of his range, so I'm not sure about how well this will turn out, but CDU is going for a balls to the wall Epsi push. So if J Rock and the Pirate Spain can get Theta, 
CDU will at least have a two cap versus Erie's one cap. So that will put them in the bit more advantageous spot, but that does depend on the Locust getting Theta without getting shot, but he's getting shot. Catapult's moving just straight up to take Theta as well. Yep, Catapult, Catapult don't care. Catapult knows it's not a Locust. It can take a few hits. It can take Theta if it needs to. And CDU making a small mistake again. They need to move up as soon as possible. They just need to keep moving up, have that Stalker, and the Phoenix Hawk provide some aggro towards Eerie, take their attention off of the three mechs that are missing. Unfortunately, though, the Banshee's been spotted, as well yeah. as the Marauder. They're turning around. This is probably not the best decision, I would say. Yep. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure how I would approach this. Would you go Epsilon wide low, or would you hug the low channel that, that the point, actual river had, runs through? They had already committed to FC. Mm. FC from this side, has a pretty good amount of space to work with and push up against Eerie. J-Rock in the back getting, the getting Kappa in the Pirate Spain, of which Eerie does not seem to be aware. Or if they are aware, they don't care. Uh, Gimme's gonna, Gimme's gonna come out and poke in the Annihilator. Yes, and they're taking way too much damage for it. And now the Banshee's pushing up by himself. Oh crap, yep. Ichi in the ba in the Banshee's in. just going straight up. He's, he is going to dive into low ground in order to preserve his mech, but that was a dangerous push right there. And you know, he's the fastest assault mech on their team, so the other ones may not be able to push and clear so so quickly. Worth noting here, Jay Friend on CDU is completely fresh in the back. However, he's not moving. I would recommend that he move and aggro the enemy by either flanking on the right and left and pop tarting unless that phoenix hawk does not have jump jets hey friend phoenix hawk 2 let me pull him up here in a moment he does have er large he has two er large lasers and jump jets so and he needs to be very aggressive give his team a fighting chance to move up cannot sit there and shoot large lasers. That is a job stalker. Mm -hmm. He needs to be a very aggressive flying gnat that flies around However, and yep. rains larges on them. That's However, the CDU ban Banshee Marauder are now are now actually broaching Th Theta, but they've taken so much damage. They're almost into brawl range, and the Marauder's at 63% in the red. They've hemorrhaged too much armor. I don't think it's going to yep. be a win for them. But yep. their cat rider in the catapult is hurt. The alpha is hurt too, a fair bit. Just lost half his armor. Catapult has a side torso open though. Ichi is going to lead the charge in it in, in his banshee fate, and he's face taking so many shots. Gimme goes back, goes down in the back. Blood Eagle goes down. I mean, Blood Eagle takes down Ichi. That stalker is about to get to go down. I as think well. with the banshee and I later. Yep, I think with the assaults down, that's that is the final nail in the coffin. It's it is now clearing up. Erie has definitely taken this match. Yes, again, hesitation has struck CDU. Yes, yeah. it's now a loss. And again, to this Phoenix Hawk, my friend, you must be very aggressive. Yeah, you I'm not sure if the, the ER large is the pick for a push deck in a Phoenix Hawk. It can work. The issue is, he was not moving at all. He was not distracting Eerie from the assault mechs whatsoever. Mm -hmm. As a Phoenix Hawk, with that type of build and jump jets, you just need to be very aggressive and you need to fly around. Mm -hmm. And when you're flying around too, you're also getting your teammates information. Because you're able to see who's shooting at you and where they're at. However, again, sitting there to not and we can see that by the two fresh mechs the battlemaster 1g at 98 percent and the commando 1d at 86 percent all right let's get these damage stats up now i'll say this early now the battlemaster on Erie did the most damage, 792. Wow. Yeah, no kidding. At 98% condition. 
So, again, maybe had the Phoenix Hawk been flying around and shooting large lasers, maybe that Battlemaster wouldn't be at 98% with almost 800 damage. Mm hmm. And maybe the score wouldn't be 8 0. Or rather, 6 0, excuse me. Yep, and you know, no double Ds occurred on CDU, but you know, 114, 152, these are not the damage numbers you want from your brawling assaults. Uh, you want them to be able to close, you want them to be able to deal all the damage because, you know, I mean, Canyon, traditionally in comp, I'd say it's been a range map, except in the light drops of, of like, leagues where, like, you're, where you're, where you're limited to, like, say, four lights and four, and four mediums. So I'd say Canyon is definitely one of those drops where it's harder to pull off a brawl. So you really have to make something spectacular work, like being able to quickly cross the open ground, of which that's not something CDU could do. the scoreboard as well. And now it would also make sense that uh, CDU won drop one because they felt much more at home brawling. And then as we started to evolve into drops uh, two through four, then, you know, we get into a little more rangy from the normal brawl. And I hope that uh, CDU, at least better late than never, realizes that the brawl strats for them are not working and whether it be player error or build error or strat error you know regardless you got to change something so i'm hoping to see cdu run a mid-range trading deck in this last in this last drop Eerie, they honestly don't have to change anything. I don't think they've even reached three of a single mech yet, seeing, seeing as they've been running non-duplicate non drops, so they could just repeat them over and over and over again. For the Alpha, perhaps? They've been running the Alpha quite exceedingly. Ah, uh, yes, they ran the Alpha on both minings and then dropped four. So yeah, they couldn't run that again. Actually, Blood Eagle has me want has me wanting to buy the Alpha now. After seeing it do that that much farmage, Alrighty, Eerie gets their 6th pilot back in, CDU gets their 6th pilot back in. Let's see if we can get this match rolling quickly. Of which, you know, I always, I'm not going to say I always judge a team ba uh, ba based on their logo art, but I do pretty often. And Eerie Dapper Raptors honestly takes the cake. Like that's a that's a pretty good that's a pretty good logo. I can't lie. I don't know if you've seen it, Derek. Hmm. I uh, believe I have actually. Yeah, pretty decent. I, I actually like it a lot. I Yeah, because I mean, you know There's it's it's not very often that you have like actual mech warrior teams like have actual professional looking logos. So, like, uh, the ones that, like, actually do, they really stand out, and they really pop, and I always like seeing it. And CDU has lock. Let's see if they've swapped things up, or if they're gonna run things the same. And, of course, for those of you who, uh, have any questions about why they brought x mech or you know what choice would it or what choice would have would have been the smarter choice and you want and you feel the need to discuss 
we you you can't always join us on the MechWarrior Comp uh the MechWarrior Comp Discord server as well. I know that can be found in the Twitch bio of MechWarrior Leagues. Also, the Moobot does post it occasionally in chat as well. And you know, come on in, say hi. If you're like, hey, why are why are they bringing the Alpha and why are Tios and Derek saying it's so good? Like you know, you can always come by and ask. Then there are plenty of chill voices around who are willing to give plenty of advice. Ooh, come on, Eerie. You're so close. Just get that sixth pilot in. Come on. Alrighty, I'm assuming Eerie's about to lock here. I hope Eerie's about to lock here. And Eerie's locked, we going. Go, go, go. Oh my. Eerie's running three Mauler MX 90s, a Dragon 5N, and a Jaeger Mech DD. That's uh, fairly scary. That is quite a bit of Daka. Uh, I'm, I'm loving this, man. So much Daka. I'm loving this. Critical Damage Unit is running a Cyclops Slepnir, Bushwhacker X1, Shadowhack. Shadowhawk 2K, Firestarter A, Annihilator 1E, and Stalker 4N. Looking over their mechs right now, seems to be the exact same plan as last time. With uh, the Cyclops running LBXs, Annihilators running 7 Snubnose PPCs. Uh, does the Annihilator 1E have a, peep, have a snub HSL? The Annihilator? No, no, no. No, it does not. It doesn't. Okay, so he's going to fire 331 then. Uh, so, yep, CDU's just running the same push deck, and it seems the Stalker is going to be the only Overwatch again. Uh, Shadowhawk has triple peeps, so he might be able to do a bit of Overwatch as well. Stand corrected, Shadowhawk has ER Large and SRM2s, so he plans on joining the Overwatch as well. So it's going to be a Shadowhawk and a... CDU needs to not climb up the middle. They need to go down that low ground. Unfortunately, the Annihilator and, and the Slepnir are climbing up. They need to hide their presence so they can push up on that Daka and take care yeah. of it. And the moment the slow Annihilator show, shows its face, it's just going to get AC2 for They've already farms. seen it. Ravi's down Sir, to 79% already. Yes, and the Annihilator is backing up into that strike. Misses it barely. That Annihilator needs to stop backing up. Unfortunately, he falls down, and now he's separated from his team. He needs to stop backing up, and he needs to push up all the way. They yeah. need to all push the Daka. Because that Daka is not very durable. It spits out the damage, but if you get the focus fire in, you can take care of it fairly quickly. But unfortunately, CDU is just sitting there, taking it all, and taking the brunt of yeah. that Daka. HG in the Annihilator has already dropped. He's in the low ground, but instead of walking through, he's waiting in the corner. Yes, he I'm needs to I'm not quite move up. sure what he's doing. That man is stuck there, and he is thinking independently of this team. 
unfortunately. Yeah. And I think this is going to be it for CDU. Yep. Eerie already has the amazing crossfire set up with five AC2 mechs. And honestly, I'm just loving this deck. Uh, it's it's so great from from Eerie. And Ravi and the Stalker down to 62% getting drilled. Slice in the Commando coming in for a bit of shots. Fizu in the fire starter though. He might be able to come up and backstab Embarrassing in, in the Jaeger mech here. He's coming up Ooh, on... The Commando took a bit of a hit from the Stalker though. Yeah. He almost got side twisted there. Oh no, Fizu! Fizu shot before he was in optimal range. She only scratched the Jaeger mech and now see, and now Eerie knows they're there. If had had Fizu shown a little bit more restraint and gotten all the way behind the Jaeger and got an optimal, he may have been able to get the kill shot. Now that commander was coming in to help take care of the fire starter, fire starter just needs yeah. to get out of there. Actually, no, the commando was open from earlier from the stalker, so maybe Firestarter will probably win this fight if the commander doesn't bail to his team. However, Zori and the dragon is coming over top, so. Uh oh. Fizu's got a bail now with the Uactus in his face. Quite a bit of docket from that dragon still, even yep. with the changes to go. Now it's kind of a stalemate. CDU sitting there it's something to trade losing armor again a very similar scenario to mining collective mm -hmm. every time they peek those maulers are watching yep the maulers on the maulers are only going in cover to cool off they don't they, they don't care about the damage they're taking now that cyclops getting smacked in the face that little rock cover right there is not enough unfortunately And the Bushwhacker, so. Bushwhacker actually cored out, for the record. Wow. Gimme and trying to get some near. things done. Yep. However, the Muller's the Annihilator is gone. Yep. Why started made it back to his team, but his team is there's really, no really hurt. there's no team to really make it back to, unfortunately. That Jaeger mech is hurt though. He's pushing up. Kills the Slepnir though. Slepnir unable to return fire. And now that Jaeger mech is just slowly walking down the executioner. Yep. Oh no, the stalker knows. He's racing over. Slice and commando coming to help. Yes, that Jaeger mech is about to go down though. And he does go down. However, the Shadowhawk goes down as well on the other side of the Gulch. And now it's just a fire starter. With a 95% dragon chase. A fresh dragon. So oh, Slice so runs in and the commando dies. It's not something you see of the dragon taking damage, or the dragon always that goes down first. Somebody, everybody focus it. It's because it is a fairly easy mech focus. It's got a big pointy nose that you could shoot at. Or you can hit one of the side horses, which are also oh, fairly easy. And there it goes. And there's the fire starter. So let's get these damages rolling, and then that will be it. Eerie winning 4 0. Make it so. So let's see. CERN, 749. Throw, 703. Blood Eagle, 540. Yeah, they just farmed in with the twos. Um, Ravi and the Stalker are getting 616. He did get like 500 damage last round, too. So. The Overwatch Stalker is definitely doing the damage. It's just the the rest of the team being unable to close. Ichi and the Annihilator getting 50 damage. Definitely a poor choice. but A poor in choice end, in piloting, I would say, more so than the, the mech build. choice. That's fair. Uh, the, the mech can work, however, being passive again like that, yeah, and just falling into the ditch, not pushing up. That's what led to them losing. Mm -hmm. Staying there, stagnating, is not what you want to do on that map. Especially when you have a push deck like that. You just have to push in on them, take care of it, clean them up. Okay. Well, 
Thank you for coming by. Thank you for joining me in the cast. I know this was a bit of a last minute one that we had to uh, throw together today. Uh, but thank, but thank you for so much for joining Scout Derek. Uh, if you are still watching, go check out Star Wolf stream. I'm actually going to put her in Twitch chat right now. Um, she is doing more comp streams right now. She's doing some casts from her channel. So. Everybody go by and check out Star Wolf because she's doing ISC casts right now and everybody should go see her because she's amazing and she's fun and she's also doing comp matches right now. So everybody should go see her. Thank you for everybody for coming by. Peace and we will catch you on the next one. Bye bye.